Hi, welcome to Paper Making with Mark Lander Part 10. And our exhibition is finished at the library and now we have so much interest we have to run a workshop on bookbinding. Library, bookbinding, and in this we'll be looking at what to do with our papers. But first of all, we're going on a special journey because there's something I want to show you. Come with me. Here we are on the wild west coast of New Zealand. This is the Tasman Sea coming in here. And this is one of the highest rainfall, wettest areas of New Zealand. So, and you say, well Mark, why are we here? Well, I'm going to show you something. So come for a walk. Let's have a look. We are at a place called Punakaiki or the Pancake Rocks, world famous in New Zealand. And I'll show them to you. We'll have to do a bit of a close up, but to me, they look like stacks of paper. Well, today is quite an exciting day because we have a commission to make a handmade book for a wedding. So in the last scenes you saw uh, what's called a French link. So if you want more information on that, you can Google it and there are a lot of lessons on how to do a French link. But in this case, um, we're going to do it like a medieval binding. So first of all, you need quite a bit of paper. And this paper is made using this system, which is drying the paper on the mould. So you, I've got about 30 of these, and a good day's work is to make 30 sheets and hang them up into the ceiling of the workshop, like that, and let them all dry, peel them off, and you've got beautiful flat paper. Now these signatures are cut. What I'm going to do is organize it now into um, how, the order I want the sheets to be. I'm going to save two pieces for what are called the end papers. So just put those aside. How many signatures have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, this is our sewing, sewing frame. And what it is, it's a chopping board, and I've drilled two holes. 
One there and one here. Now these are threaded rods, so you can see it's a 5 8 threaded rod and they go down into there and I have two pieces of wood again with the holes drilled in them and they fit in up here and also underneath under here very simple it's a, a frame with wood and wood on the top with two nuts the next thing is this is hemp rope so I got it from the two dollar shop and it's a lovely natural um, natural fiber and what I'm going to do is I'm going to string it up here. I leave a nice long tail sticking down This is a piece of paper, the same width as my signatures are. And then I'm going to mark on here where I want my holes. So I want one here, one on each side of each string. And then one there. Here is a, a sharpened screwdriver, so that's our punch. So that's going to punch through the paper. So I take my signature here, open it up in the middle, place my template on, then happily punch through, two, three, and so you can see. I have some cotton thread and I'm going to thread a nice long needle. This is a block of beeswax which I'm going to um, coat the thread in so it pulls, pulls through the project. What I'd like to do before I put the second one is, is to put a spacer in there. The reason for that is that your spine can become too tight. You can see here I'm going to loop it underneath that one and create a like a link stitch. Right, it's all stitched up. Now I'm going to cut my string, so I'm going to use my piece of paper as a measurer. Now remember those two end papers. Well here they are. And um, we put a little bit of glue on the edge and they fit right in there behind the strings. like this. I'm going to make some tabs of this. It's like printer's mull. And these fold over the blue end papers. Check everything's nice and straight. Now, using a strip, 
of fibrous New Zealand flax paper. I'm going to glue that onto the back of the book. It's this book binding glue which is um, quite remains flexible. These boards are about a quarter inch bigger on three sides, one, two, three, and in from that edge. Now these boards are made from this. These are offcuts from picture framers, so they do their mat boards and they have lots of offcuts. So what I do is use PVA go and put three layers together and mark where those strings will go down into holes. And to punch them, I've got this punch set, which will punch down into there and make those holes. Next step is to poke them through the holes backwards. Then I want to shred them, so I'm undoing them. I glue them down. Again, we've got our glue, smear. do next is put the little end papers in like that it makes a nice neat little end see there now I'm going to put this hemp rope around the edge of the cover and to do that I'm going to use a glue gun and mainly because it sets sets instantly um, you don't have to pin it in place while you're waiting for wet glue to dry. And when I come around the end, I make a nice generous loop. Right, this is the fun part, which is designing my design. So I'm going to make an oval and you put two pins and a loop of thread. Well, my book is all now covered in strings and ropes. So I've got paper to go over the spine. 
tucks down into the various crevices of the book. So we'll do that. Oh, it was nice and gooey. Now I'm just going to put that in the press and leave it for half an hour or so for that glue to set. I've cut two pieces of paper to cover this front edge. Generous amount of glue into those ropes. It can be a bit of a messy business. Things seem to sometimes get a little bit out of control. And maybe that's just me. You can see there's a considerable amount of pressure in there, squeezing who broke the handle off that press? Oh yeah. Look at that you can see that beautiful texture. of our wonderful clay paint and I'd like it a sort of an orangey colour so Put that into there a little bit of water and that will slate down to a lovely red really yellow next thing I add is some PVA glue The next thing is to put a whitewash on it. So I've mixed a bit of limestone with PVA glue and water. <laughs> 